Oh yeah, ay. When you need a hand and you don't know why Just know that I'll be there When the road is long and you feel so tired With E Dash Power Sport. I just finished my coffee on a Sunday morning, and you know what that means. We're gonna talk about some industry, some bikes, and some stuff I have here. Um, and I just looked around like that because this bike has just been dying to get out and ride, um, especially since the order got canceled, which brings me to a first part of our, our topics today, which is uh, influencers. Um, <laughs> Because let's face it, there are a lot of people out there that think they're influencers that, I mean, I understand, you know, it's a thing. You have to build up, you have to develop and stuff. Um, but it's an, an interesting thing in that a lot of people have grown this mentality around being an influencer that is almost entitled. I mean, <laughs> and let me explain how I got there. Um, <laughs> It wasn't hard. Um, when we first started this company, and actually when I first started this company, and we started getting bikes and stuff in, um, I understood obviously that you know you put things on YouTube, people try them out, they review them, they, it's good, right? Um, which is good for manufacturing companies, right? For the companies that make these bikes, that's great. It introduces their product to the public, right? But for me, as a retailer, right, as a front end person who is not only working to get you the right bike, but working to make sure that even after your warranty expires, you can keep riding it. Um, I don't have that kind of money, right? I don't have huge bank accounts with unlimited amounts of cash at my disposal that I can just, you know, send out units willy-nilly to everybody. You know, it's, uh, I'm, I'm a normal guy with normal finances. <laughs> And, uh, and just, you know, this is what I do now. <laughs> so it's just funny to me because, so, uh, give you an example. This bike right here was purchased by somebody that considers himself an influencer. Um, and at first when they bought it, I, you know, they paid for it. So I was like, okay, well they do videos and stuff and I can respect that, right? They want to get the bike. They're going to pay for it outright and, uh, and do this. But the whole time through the ordering and the delivery process, we were waiting it for China, it was almost abusive. Like I would get videos, I would get calls and texts, messages and stuff. I need that bike now. This stuff's so horrible. You gotta get it to me now. I can't wait any longer. It would just be like, oh my gosh. Um, and obviously this person had some issues and they were taking their issues out of us. But it was just amazing. Um, how that goes and of course once things with the whole deal didn't turn out the way they wanted right which by the way a serial number isn't supposed to be removable right that's the idea of a serial number you, it makes it hard to remove and I've done a good job here this is not ruined this is how it should be because it makes it hard to steal <laughs> that's oh, oh man that's the whole point of having a serial number so anyway so this influencer, of course, turned around and, you know, in their tantruming, because that's what this person did, was throw a big hissy fit tantrum, um, made videos anti-E dash power sport. And, you know, you can, you can go watch him, get his side of the story. I mean, if, it, go for it. <laughs> uh, I've got a nice long list and videos and stuff that you can watch and, whoa. <laughs> I, uh, I actually refunded, well, I didn't refund, I canceled out his restocking fee for this bike um, because I, I suggested he go get some help or go take a break or whatever he needs to do to freaking chill out before he goes shooting something up because, whoa. Um, but beyond that, I mean, this is a great bike. I'm actually going to take it out today. 
I'm gonna ride it. Um, oh, and another thing that that uh, pseudo influencer accused me of was sandbagging it so I could give him a refund to sell it for more, right? Which is ridiculous. I'm actually selling this bike for the invoice. <laughs> So, and if you know how our pricing goes, the fact that I have it here means it automatically goes up in price, but I'm not doing that. I'm just selling it for the money on the invoice. So all of his accusations are completely liable. Um, he accuses me of fraud, which again, liable. Um, but you know, there's people like that, you know, that have their own issues, right? And, and have their own problems that they need to address. And you know, the world is a very stressful place. It's hard, right? It's not easy. And if you live somewhere like New York where it's cramped and you're all fighting for space and just any scrap of attention from your, your community, then uh, yeah, it's even harder. It's even harder. Um, and the psychologies that come into play in uh, these things are, are pretty interesting to me, right? That's actually what I did for 20 plus years. Um, but yeah, you become very anxiety ridden. Uh, it leads and stressed out. It leads to heart attacks. It leads to, I mean, all kinds of stress related uh, symptoms and issues. So hopefully that guy will go get the help he needs. He'll de-stress, maybe move out of New York. That's what, what I suggest to him. Uh, but then we have the other influencers, right? Which, uh, you know, they actually have like tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, or even millions of followers. Um, they actually get, you know, views and they can actually market a product for you and they can actually do something to help your business, right? But it doesn't mean that that's always going to help your business. Uh, I've talked with CEOs that have invested heavily in the influencer marketing systems and, uh, they just saw no return. I mean, I've, I've, <laughs> I've talked to companies that have, have handed out, you know, small companies that have handed out tens of thousands of dollars worth of product and seen ones of thousands of dollars in sales return. So just because you give your stuff to an influencer doesn't guarantee you're gonna see a return, right? Um, and then you're out product, you're out time, that's all money that you could have put into other marketing efforts that would have yielded. And so for us, when we look at it, we, we don't really adhere to the influencer marketing model because as I've stated in earlier videos, the math doesn't work out. It doesn't always work out. So why am I bringing this up? Well, because if you look at Instagram, you're gonna see that White Wall Stunts is now sponsored by us, sponsored by E-Dash Power Sport. And I wanna talk about that because <laughs> at the moment, I can't afford to sponsor anybody, barely myself. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so, but, but to be real, the reason uh, that we decided to do this with White Wall Stunts was um, his motorcycle got, we'll say, confiscated. Um, and it's tragic to me as somebody, again, who worked in HR, talent management, recruiting, to see somebody with such talents not be able to use them because they just don't have the tool, right? The bikes, we love them, it's great, but be real, it's a tool that we use, right? So in order for some people to be able to achieve, they must have tools. Um, when I talked with them and we did our initial, you know, kind of chit chat, um, the thing that really stood out to me though in our conversation was none of his other sponsors had offered to give him a bike. Uh, it kind of it really surprised me and shocked me. Like here's companies that this guy already works with that he's promoting, that they're getting sales on his efforts from, but nobody wants to give him a bike to ride so he can do more stuff for them, right? Um, and that I found even more tragic because I looked at like, well, these are companies that are making money. These are companies that are doing okay. Why isn't anyone ponying up so this guy can ride? Um, and so when he came out, we met, we chatted, he checked out the motorcycles. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I paid for one of these bikes outright. Like I bought it, right? Um, with my own money, with my own money, <laughs> with my own money, I paid for it, I bought it cash, right? And I did that for a few different reasons, but essentially the bike that Whitewall chose um, 
was my bike. All right, that was the bike that I owned. That was the bike that I paid my money for, my cash, not business money. Um, and the reason I did it was one, again, you know, again, there's somebody with great talent that's not being able to, it's not able to use it, right? And that's tragic. Two, the companies that are already involved with him weren't helping him out. And so <laughs> that's like tragedy number two, where it's insult to injury. Um, and finally, uh, you know, it was an opportunity where we could both help each other. And I think that when it comes to influencers, somebody like him who, you know, actually needed the help, right, and will appreciate it more, um, is, is more of what I'd be looking for in, in the influencer market. But right after he went out to all this and do this, I got people binging me, hey, send me one, I'll ride it, hey, send me one, I'll ride it, hey, send me one, I'll ride it, hey, guess what? I ride them. <laughs> right? I do videos already and stuff. We already have, we already do these things, right? We're already in that point. We already put videos up. It's not about giving you a bike to ride, okay? It's about coming up with an appropriate agreement that makes sure that in getting a bike to ride that we don't end up just losing out on the spend, right? And everybody, oh, you get it. It's like, no, I don't like to just, oh, you'll get it. I like to know how my money's coming back to me. I like to know where it's coming from and how it's going to come this way. So um, in influencer marketing, what we look at is return. And in any marketing, we look at return. If it doesn't show return, we don't use it, right? It's very simple. So um, Whitewall has a great following. Uh, you guys are all like, you know, really supportive of him. And I think that's awesome. Um, he was able to get his RV out and stuff, which I think is great. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's, uh, we're not here to, to hand out bikes to influencers for free. I mean, that's not, and I understand there's a, a, an expected return, but if you want to work on a guaranteed return, then we can talk. All right. Um, that's really what we're talking about here. It's not about handing these things out because you know what? These cost money. Okay. These cost money. They take time. They take effort. Um, they're not cheap and the time isn't short so you know to just hand one out like that is hard right I, like I said even the one that we handed the white wall for him to use is my bike I mean that was my personal bike so think about that all right before you you send me an email or just a note saying hey give me a bike and I'll ride it uh, okay I mean one I don't know who you are two uh, if I look and you have one or 2,000 followers, probably not going to give you a bike. <laughs> give you a bike. We don't give bikes away. All right, let's, put, let's make that clear. And three, um, you know, I, I look for people that need things. Okay. White wall stunts, he needed a bike so that he could continue on making things and doing things. Um, most of you coming at me asking me for bikes and stuff, you got like four or five bikes lined up there and not one of you said, hey buddy, you're my friend, you're my pal, I like you, here's a bike to this dude. So, yeah, you know what, me giving you another bike to ride around just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I just, yeah, I didn't, I, I don't, I don't understand this. So, <laughs> if you're an influencer and you want to work with us, um, you know, please have great numbers. Uh, please be able to discuss uh, what kind of return we can expect and how we guarantee that return. Um, and be able to introduce yourself appropriately because, I mean, some of you just sending me like one line notes saying, give me a bike so I can ride it. I, I've been so tempted just to ignore it, but <laughs> I'll try to be a nice guy, you know, I talk to you about stuff. Yeah, so that's the, the tale of two influencers, you might say, you know, one just entitled, anger, raged kind of guy, and the, uh, the other uh, really nice, in need um, type of person that, you know, no one else was stepping up for. So um, remember that. Think about that. If you're a business owner and you're watching this, think about that when you're looking at influencers. It's like, am I just another drop in the bucket to this person, or is there an actual connection we can make here? Because if you can make a connection with them, that's a good thing. I mean, there's real business that can be done there. There's real things that can happen. If not, I mean, you're just 
again, you're just a drop in a bucket. So, um, on to the bikes. So, <laughs> again, I'm gonna ride this thing today. If you saw the picture I put out, uh, you'll know that it is ready to go. I uh, went through it. There we go. Over and over. I'll show you guys some song. Little song song. Wow! Look at that light. Wow! <laughs> turn signal. Oh, turn signal. Mm -hmm. And oh, brake lights pinched. Oh no. Yep. See this thing. It's interesting. I unwrapped it yesterday. Let's do that again. Okay, sorry. I'm getting distracted. I'm fixing that. Anyway, so. <laughs> This is what caused me not to ship it, actually, was this brake light got pinched. And I think it's because down here they actually put this headlight thing in, which made me have to mount it here in a very creative way. When usually you mount them down here. Um, yeah, and mounting on this didn't work because I just pivot. So what I'm probably going to do here later, actually right now after I close this out, is unwrap this, pull this cord out so there's some breathing room here on this. Yeah. Wire. I can just, yeah, snip that as a separate, but okay, anyway, I'm getting distracted. But see, that's why we ride it. We have to uh, check it out. Oh. Beep, beep. Just, oh. Gotta love the horn. Um, yeah, it all comes on, it works great. Turn signals, lights. Uh, I had to adjust a fork yesterday, get that set square. Um, it's interesting. But yeah, all good to go now. I'm gonna take it for a test drive and uh, see how it goes. And then we got uh, the V12Fs in here. I've got tin bot right here. We actually have more tin bots. We have more V12Fs. And we have more VMX12s. Um, the little guy that you see that White Wall Stunts is uh, prepping up for himself. That one we do have more of too. So feel free to get an order in. Uh, let us know what you want and we'll get them delivered. You guys all have fun. Ride safe out there. Know that I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be there, I'll be there